Hey everybody, welcome back to another issue of the Mountaintop Comic Review. I'm Sawyer. Still Robbie. He's still Robbie. And he always will be, hopefully. This, this time, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Me and Robbie have gone into our personal collections and grabbed a little something random. And we're going to give you our reviews of a little something we like to call the Dollar Bin Dive. Even though it's not a dollar bin, it's our collection. Close enough. Coming right up. Well, me and Robbie jumped into our, well, dove into our personal collections, and you're about to see what we pulled out. What did you get, Robbie? Well, I got lucky. Uh, when I just picked a random box in my collection, just flipped to the middle, pulled one out. I pulled out Thor 347. Mm -hmm. uh, Thor 347 is right in the middle of one of the greatest runs by a particular uh, you know, artist and character. The Thor Simonson run is some of the best comic books out there that I think I've probably read over my years. I 100% agree. Um, you know, to me, when I look at this cover here, you got Malekith, you got all the, the sharp angles of Simonson's artwork. When I think about the, the Thor movies, Asgard, that we've seen in MCU, mm -hmm. this is what I picture. I, I almost feel like they took it from Simonson's art because it was so similar. Uh, the colors and everything that was used in the book like i said the sharp angles really fit because of the uh the norse connection i you know i think of armor and shields and swords and, and kinda, it should be sharp yeah like the futuristic look yes. of asgard itself yeah i yeah i agree uh, one of the things that as i went back through it which i actually read this run quite often just go back for the fun of it but one of the things that really sticks out to me about any Simonson artwork is his sound effects that he puts in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not your usual boom, pal, zorp. Uh, his is you know, 15 letters long and it's spread out across the whole panel. You just got Kawanga Bang. And his, <laughs> his sound effects, I guess you say, become part of the artwork themselves. I mean, I, I can look at a book, and even if I don't see any of the drawings of the characters, if I just see that sound effect i could narrow it down to two or three people and he's that's usually like, that's like a lot of hulk books mm -hmm. they'll have smash like he'll be hitting someone with a boulder but the boulder will be made out of boom right and that's you know that to me that's one of the cool things that works out for this it's i don't know that it costs a dollar you could probably get out of a 50 cent bin if you were looking uh mm -hmm. you know, it's got some great characters of course it's got thor uh, Balder. This issue contains Fat Balder. Fat Balder. Uh, that was actually mm. you know, a, a pretty big portion of it. Uh, Balder was very much closer to Volstag for a while. He mm. uh, he was struggling trying to find himself. You do have appearance of the Warriors Three, Odin, like and then the you know going three. back to the the MCU there, Malekith yeah. is back and he's trying to. He's got the uh, casket of Winters and you see a, an appearance of Surtur. Surtur. Mm. You know, Surtur in the, the last Thor movie, I thought was pretty well done. I agree. Uh, definitely doesn't look exactly like no. you know, the comic book, but that's understandable. <laughs> but this Surtur that we see here, I mean, it's it's classic Surtur, giant red guy, flame sword, and he is he's waiting to come out. You could do a lot worse for randomly digging into a uh, oh, I know dollar book. Do, I know you could do a lot. Surely worse. not. <laughs> Mine was Evangeline issue eight. Evangeline is being trained to be the modern day, modern day version of, I believe it's called the Militia Christi. Well, basically that was the Christian mili the Catholic military <laughs> from the Middle Ages. In this issue, the eighth issue, she is being trained by two trainers, one in firearms and one in hand-to-hand -hand combat and her religious things. That's as much as I'm going to go into religion. But I, I thought it was okay. It's from First Comics. It came out in 1988. I just... I was so confused. If this is the eighth issue and she's just starting to get trained, 
What was going on the first seven issues? She was learning how to be a nun. Was she just in a nunnery somewhere? Like a seven issue comic story <laughs> of a nun? Is that all that's going on? Or I don't know, maybe I've misread what number the issue is. I just, <sighs> yeah, it I doesn't know. seem like there will be First any Comics has put out some crazy stuff over the years. And you said this was 88? 88, yes. 88, 88. so I mean, that was certainly a... That was the time of Lethal Weapon and some of the you know big time action movies. So it's not surprising that some of the comics kind of go in that direction. I remember my dad buys a lot of stuff from online auctions, and we got and we got a box in one day, and I opened it. I'm going through. I'm like, okay, yeah, so I'll buy this stuff, and I get to some stuff, and I'm like, <laughs> what on earth is this? It was this cover, which is Evangeline, the apparently ready to go nun, standing next to. I don't know, Sister Janice. Mm -hmm. It was good. You could probably pay like a dime for it. <laughs> we got it for free. Uh, that might be more of a freebie comic book for sure. You, you know, like if you're really, if you're a first comics collector, still, I just, you can do a lot worse than Walt Simonson Thor. I can tell you that. It wasn't, it wasn't badly written. The art was good. But what the heck kind of concept? I don't, Like you said, being eight issues in. And you're it, just getting trained. It's very strange that uh, you're just now getting to a point where obviously based on the cover, guns are involved and you've got the... But she wasn't, she wasn't really fighting anyone but her trainers, like yeah. sparring with them. Well, now I'm curious what happens before this and after this. Yeah, you've got the female version of Cable there on the cover. Is so she, she got the... She got... Is she going to like... I don't know. Is there going to be some demon in the nunnery? Kick some demon butt in mm -hmm. the nunnery? Richard does not want to mess with these nuns. I can tell you that. Yeah, he Richard, mess with Richard couldn't beat up these nuns for any oh, copies of Iron Man 2020. <laughs> it, uh, you know, looking at it, like you said... The artwork doesn't look bad from the cover. The story, I can't say it's my cup of tea, but it sounds interesting enough. I hey, mean, there's, there's if something you want to it. branch out, I would recommend it. You know, and really, that's the best way to do it sometimes when you are trying to find something new to read. I know myself, I kind of, I'm not saying I get in a rut, but I get certain books that I read every time, and I don't always give new things well, tries so see that was the same way i was but we started the podcast and i was like oh crap i can't review the same book mm -hmm. same books once a month every time so i'm starting to branch out that's what introduced me to die which if you watch the show you know that i don't shut up about it it's good but i i never would have found it if i wasn't on the show it, but it just goes to show you that stuff like diving into a dollar bin or even diving into your own collection and when you get enough stuff, books, you, you forget what you've got. And you you reach in and you pull out, holy crap, Evangeline issue eight. <laughs> what is that? You read it and you're like, wow, that was strange. Like, I was going through some older stuff and I had, I don't know what volume of New Warriors. It wasn't the original mm -hmm. New Warriors. It was New Warriors issue one. <sighs> okay. New Warriors issues one and two have probably some of my most, if I had to make a list of strangest villains, they'd be at the top. Issue one entails a goblin who bites you like a vampire and has AIDS. I was, I was like, what? He's what? He's, he's been mechanically engineered. Issue two has Snowflame. Oh, Snowflame. <laughs> I know all about Snowflame. Snowflame is a supervillain powered by cocaine. There are panels of him souping himself up by snorting. What the heck was going on? This came, I, I'm pretty sure this new Warriors run came out around the same time as this. What the heck was going on in the late 80s? Those were probably just PSA announcements for staying off of that sort of stuff. And, being careful because like up until that point you had serious like you know like uh there's a famous cover of green arrow and green lantern of you know speedy is on drugs i've never actually read the story but i know the cover and then there's of course the famous spider-man story that 
if you know the history of comic lore, I guess you'd say, it was published without the stamp of the Comics Code of Authority because Stan Lee was like, to heck with it. This is a PSA on why you don't do drugs as a teenager. And he published it. So... There is... We're really getting off topic. I don't know where we're going with this. When you brought up Snowflame, <laughs> I was done. I, I, I had to really take a few minutes to come back. Okay, basically, I think we should just round it out, come back. Comics, there's something for everybody. If you like kick-butt nuns, read Evangeline. If you like good art and weird onomatopoeias, <laughs> read The Mighty Thor. Yeah. <laughs> I suggest to anybody who buys comic books... Next time you're at the comic book store or anywhere else, buy your normal stuff, spend that quarter, reach into the quarter box randomly and pick out a book, read it. You know, if you like it, maybe read more. If not, it costs you a quarter. You can cost you a quarter. Throw it in the trash, you shred it up, give it to, you know, the neighborhood kid that you don't like. Get it get a collection of them and have a nice bonfire. And <laughs> it won't hurt you at all, but you will you will stumble upon some stuff that you like. Like I may have. I don't know. I'm definitely going to do some research on Evangeline because I am curious. I am not. I'm going to let him go ahead and do that one. <laughs> well, I, I have to find out. I need to know. <laughs> well, I think that's all for Dollar Bin Dive. Maybe. I don't know. We might be back. This has been a strange episode of the Mountaintop Comic Review, but hey, Always try new things when it comes to comics. You'll find something you like. Nobody else may like it, but you like it, and that's what matters. Anything? I used to be a lifeguard, and I can tell you this from experience. You know, anytime you go diving, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't, but always read with a buddy. <laughs> okay. I don't. Is there anything else you <laughs> want to add? <laughs> uh, keep collecting. Well, keep collecting. And keep reading. So long, everybody. <laughs>